Good evening. My name is Crystal Eberly, and I'm the principal of Coromdeo Academy, and I'd like to welcome you. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you to our first of two performances of Shakespeare's The Tempest. Uh, these students have been working since the day after we got back from uh, winter break, uh, Christmas break, and they have worked so hard. And um, these students, I wish they were all mine, but they aren't all mine. Uh, we have students from Coromdeo Academy. We have students from um, the uh, Orthodox Academy, and we have students from Running Start, as well as several homeschool students. So this is a, a group, a very mixed group of students, and they have worked well together. Um, just for those of you who are from Coromdeo Academy or acquainted with that, this is the building where our 7th through 12th graders are going to be meeting next year. So if that is of interest to you, you can kind of look around and get acquainted with the building. Uh, I do need to let you know tonight that um, there will be photos after the show. So we're going to make the students stay in their costumes and makeup and be up here on the stage for you to come forward and get your pictures, for you to, um, to get whatever photos you want to take. So don't worry about that. We're, we've already warned them that they need to stay here in costume and makeup. So please uh, come up forward if you want that opportunity. I also need to let you know that The Tempest is a comedy. That means it's perfectly all right to laugh. Some of the jokes are Shakespeare, well, they're all Shakespearean, and the language is going to be a little dense, but there's a lot of physical comedy, there's a lot of uh, wordplay, a lot of puns, a lot of wonderful insults. You'll really enjoy it. Um, I also need to warn you that for the next two hours, this building is enchanted. It is, it is infested with fairies. Some of the fairies look like fairies, some of them look like dogs, some of them are nymphs, some of them are dryads and naiads, and some of them are goddesses. So if you see magical creatures flitting around this building, you need to understand you can see them, but none of the characters on the stage can see them. So um, you're welcome to enjoy their antics, but don't be surprised if the people on stage don't respond because the fairies are invisible. Just letting you know. Those of you down here, I need to warn you, you are in the splash zone. So um, I hope you'll enjoy that. Just letting you know. Thank you.
Cursed Father, you put the wild waters in this war. A lake, the sky it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, and that the sea, mounting to the welcome's cheek, dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer, a brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her. Poor souls, they perished. Be collected. No more reason. Call your pity's heart. There's no harm done. Oh, oh, the day. No harm. I have done nothing but in care of you. Thee, my daughter. Thee, my dear one. Poor ignorant of what thou art. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. This time I should inform thee farther. Lend a hand and pluck my magic garments from me. <laughs>
She provided me with volumes from my own library, which I prized above my dukedom. Would I have been seen it? Now I arise. No, thus far forth. And here in this island have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princesses can, that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. But the heavens thank you for it. But for now, still just beating in my mind the reason for raising the sea storm. Never thus far forth. By accident, no strange, bountiful fortune, now, my dear lady, hath my enemies been brought to this shore. But here, <laughs> cease more questions. <laughs> that were inclined to sleep. <laughs> this is a gold bonus, and give it away. I know that I can't stop choose. Approach my area. Come. All hail, great master, grave Sir Hale. I come to answer thy best pleasure. Be to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds. To thy strong bidding, task Ariel and all her quality. Hast thou spirit, performed to a point the tempest which I bid thee? To every article, I've boarded the king's ship. Now in the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometimes I'll divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, yards, and bowsprit where I flame distinctly, they meet and join. Joe's lightning. The precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning, were not. The fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune did seem to besiege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread tribe shake. That's my brave spirit, who is so firm, so constant, that his coil would not affect her reason. Not a soul but felt the fevers of man and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners quit the vessel and plunge into the foaming brine. Then, all afire with me, the king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leapt, cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here! Why, that's my spirit. But <laughs> well, was this not nice shore? Close by, my master. But are the area safe? Not a hair perish. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish but fresher than before, and as thou bidst me, in troops I have dispersed about the isle. The king's son, if I landed by himself, whom I loved coolly the air was sought, in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting, his arms in this sad knot. Of the king's ship, the mariners, tell me how thou hast disposed of them, all the rest of them. Safely in harbour is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou calledst me up at midnight to fetch dew from Silvax for moods. There she's hid. The mariners all under hatches stow, who, with a charm joined their soft labor, I have left to sleep, and for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all have met again and are on the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing they saw the king's ship wrapped in his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there is more work to do. What's the time of day? Past the mid season. At least two glasses. The time between six and now must by both of us be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now? Moody? What is it now? Pimps the man? My liberty. Before the time is out? No more. <laughs> I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistake. Served without grudge or rumblings, thou didst promise to beat me a full year. Didst thou forget what a torment I did free thee from? I do not, sir. Ah. Thou liest, malignant thing. Ah. Hast thou forgot the foul which so corrects? Who is aged and has grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak. Tell me. Sir, in a greer. Oh, was she so? I was once in a month for count, but thou forgets. This damn witch so corrects with mischief manifold and sorceries terrible to enter into human green. From a greer thou knowest was banished. For one thing she did, they would not take her life. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reportest thyself, was then her servant. And for thou was a spirit too delicate to enact her earthly and abhorred commands. Refusing her grand nest, she did confine me into a cloven pine, 
Within which rift, in prison, that it's painfully remain a dozen years. Within which space she died, and left thee there, where thou had bent thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was the Simon, save for her son, she is with her here, a speckled boat, hag born, not armed with human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. A dull thing, I say so, that Caliban, who now I do keep in service. Thou best knowest what torment I did free thee from. Thy groans that make wolves howl and penetrate the breast of ever angry bears. It was mine art when I arrived, and heard thee, and made the pine gape and set thee free. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I'll rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails, so thou hast howled away wild wind girls. Pardon, master, I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days, I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go, hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. Oh, the strangeness of your story, but heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on. Who was that Caliban, my slave? He never yield us a kind answer. To the villain, sir, I do not love to look on. But as his, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices with profits. What ho, slave, Caliban, <laughs> thou wert thou to speak. There's one enough within. Come forth, there's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? Fine apparition, my quaint period, hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked damn, come forth! As the wicked Jew is, my mother brushed with the raven's feather from a wholesome vent, drop on you both, and a southwest wind blow on ye and blister you all over. <laughs> 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 Be sure tonight that you'll have crash! Besides, did you tell pet thy breath? Urchin shell for the vast delight that they may work all exercise on them. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycombs, each pinch more stinging than the bees that may up. I must see my dinner, the island's mine by the grass, my mother, which thou just takest from me. When thou came first, thou strokest me and madest much of me. Thou wouldst give me waters with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night. And I love thee, and I show thee all the qualities of the island. The fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, and fertile. Cursed be that I did so, all the charms of sick grass, toads, beetles, back, lie on you, for I am all the subjects that you have. First, when mine was on my own king, and here you stied me in this hard rock, and keep me from the rest of the island. That most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness, I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, that thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, ho, 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 would it have you done, thou didst prevent me? I'd had people thou the I with Caliban's. <laughs>
where should this music be? In the air or of the earth? It sounds no more, and sure it waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on the bank, weeping again, the king, my father's rat. This music crept by me upon the waters, elaine, both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me, rather, but tis gone. No, it begins again. <laughs> My tutor, put up thy sword, traitor. 
who makes a show, but darest not to strike. Come from thy ward, bring Eric and disarm me, and make thy weapon drunk. Beseech you, father. Hence, hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity on me, surety. What? An advocate for an impostor? Silence! One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. A foolish wretch. You think there are no such more shapes as having seen that him and Caliban? <laughs> to the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. Well, then I have no ambition to seek a goodlier, a goodlier man. Come, obey. Thy mirrors are in their infancy again, and have no bigger in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's lost, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued are but light to me. Might I, but through my prison once a day, behold this maid, all corners else of the world, let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such prison. Thou hast done well, Fan Eric. Hark what thou else shalt do. Be of comfort, sir. Thy father's of a na better nature than appears by speech. This is a wanted which just now came from him. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds, but then exactly to all points of my command. To the syllable. <clears throat> Come, follow. Speak not for him. Uh, if I, if I... <laughs> <laughs> Tunis. Twas a 
sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. Tunis has never been graceful to such a paragon to their queen. Not since Widow Dido's time. Widow Dido, a pox on that. How came that widow in, Widow Dido? What if she'd said Widow or Aeneas, too? Good Lord, how do you take it? Widow Dido said you make me study that. She was a Carthage, not Tunis. This Tunis, sir, was Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. Her word is more than the miraculous heart. Sir, you are talking that our garments seem now as fresh as they put them on first and after, at the marriage of your daughter Clarabel to the king of Tunis. And the rarest that e'er can learn. Bait, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Hey, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido. <laughs> It's not, sir. My gown is fresh as the first day I wore it. I mean, in a sword. That sword was well fished for. What I wore it is your daughter's marriage. You cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sins! When I never marry my daughter there! But coming since, my son is lost, and in my way, she too, who is so far from Italy removed, I ne'er again shall see her. Oh, thou my hair of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made this beyond me? Sir, you may live, for I saw him get the surgish at her head, and ride upon her bats, and trod her. So the surgeon was swollen and met him, bold head, filled with pinches, waves, and can't be himself with arms, of a good lefty stroke to the shore, over his wave, one face of bad, as stooping to meet him, I knocked out, came to a live to land. No, no, he's gone! Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss, that would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather, lose her to an African, where she, at least, is banished from your eye, who have caused to, who have caused to wet the green off. Pretty peace! You were kneeled to, and importuned otherwise, by all of us, and the fair soul herself weighed between lowness and obedience, at which end the being should bow. We have lost your son, I fear forever. Milan and Naples and Mo widows and them of this business making, then we bring men to comfort. The fault's your own. Look at the dearest of the laws. My lord Sebastian, the truth you speak, the lack some time and gentleness to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. And most trojanly. <laughs> it is foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. <clears throat> foul weather? Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> 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 well, a plantation of this isle, my lord. She'd sow the never seen, or docks, or mallows. And were I queen on it, what would I do? Escape being dropped for want of wine. All men idle, all. And women too, but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. Yet she would be queen. The last one of the commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce, without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun. Or need of any engine, would I not have? But nature should bring forth its own kind, all poison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. No marrying, one for something? None, ma'am. All idle. <laughs> I would, with such perfection, govern, sir, to excel the golden age. God save her majesty! I live, Gonzala! And do you mark me, sir? Really, no more! Thou dost talk nothing to me! I do well believe it. And did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen, who are such sensible and nimble ones that they always used to laugh at nothing. It was you we laughed at. Oh, it's very <laughs> I have nothing to you, so you may continue and laugh at nothing still. <laughs> and I'd not fallen the flat wall. You are gentlemen of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue at five weeks without changing. We would so, and then go back. No, I warrant you. I will not adventure my discretion so easily. Will you laugh me asleep? For I am very heavy. Go, sleep, and hear us. What? I'll so soon asleep. I wish my eyes would themselves shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please do, sir. Do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow. When it doth, it is a comfort. 
Who's wrong? Where fool is ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst we stood here, secure your repose, even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing, like bulls, or rather lions. Did it not wake you? It struck my ear most terrible. I heard nothing. No, it did to fright the monsters here. Sure, make an earthquake. With the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalez? Upon my honor, sir. I heard a humming, and that a strange one, too, which did awake me. I shaked you, sir, and cried. As mine eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. There was a sound, that's fair. Tis best we stand upon our ground, or that we quit this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground, and let's make further search for my poor son. Heaven keep him from these beasts, for he is sure in the island. Lead away. Prosper, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, King, go safely on to seek thy son. Sing 
at a man's funeral. Well, there's my comfort. <laughs> <laughs>
Swam ashore, man, like a duck. <laughs> I can swim like a duck. I'll be swimming. Yeah. Just the fuck. <laughs> well, I can swim like a duck. Thou art made like a goose. No, no. That's somebody more or less. The whole butt, man. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hit. Come on, moon god. How does I add you? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? How did the moon lie to us, surely? I was the man in the moon one time was. <laughs> I have seen thee, Perth, and I do join thee. My mistress showed me thee, and I dog in thy bush. I oh, swear to that, there's still a book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. <laughs> by this <laughs> Sports are painful, and their labor, labor delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to the chance. This, my mean task, would be as heavy to me as odious. Oh, the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead, and makes my labor's pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crab. He is composed of harshness. Must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them upon a sore injunction. My mistress weeps when she sees me work. <laughs> says such and says such baseness had never like executor. I forget, but these thoughts do even refresh my labors. So most busyness when I do it. Alas, how pray you work not so hard. I would the light. <laughs> He's safe for these three hours. 
No, sweet creature. I had rather crack my crack my sinews, break my back, than for you to such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your love while. Better give me that. I'll carry it to file. No, precious creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than for you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. I should do it with much more ease. My goodwill is too, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look clearly. <sighs> no, tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I may set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your head to say so. Admired, Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration. Worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady have I eyed with best regards, and many the time their tongue hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For many virtues have I like several women. Never any was so false soul, but some defect in her to quarrel with the noblest grace she owed, and put it to the foil. But you, oh you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. <sighs> I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remember. Sit from my glass, my nose. You have I seen men that I may call you, friend. And my dear father, how features are abroad. But by my modesty, the jewel my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form something to like of. But I prattle. Something too wildly, and my father's precepts I bear to forget. I am, in my condition, a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. Hear my soul speak the very instant that I saw you. Did my heart fly to your service? There resides to make me slave to you, to it. And for your sake am I this patient log man. Do you love me? <laughs> oh, heaven, oh, earth. Bear witness to the sound, I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, honor you. I'm true, I'm glad of. Fair and happy, between two most rare affections, heaven's rain grace on that which breathes between them. Wherefore weep you? Am I no worthiness that dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want? But this is trifling, and all the more it seeks the hide itself, and the bigger book it shows. Hence, bashful cunning, and wholly innocent, have brought me plain. I'm your wife, if you will marry me. <laughs> Not, I'll die, your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me. But I'll be your servant, whether you will or no. Oh, mistress, dearest, and I, thus humble ever. My husband. <laughs> I, with a heart as willing as freedom of bondage, here's my hand. And mine, my heart in it. But farewell to half an hour hence. A thousand, a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> as glad of this as they. I cannot be. <laughs> we were surprised with all. But my rejoicing and nothing can be more. I'll to my book, for yet ere supper time, I must perform much business appertaining.
Thy eyes are almost set in thy head. Where should they be set else? You are a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail. <laughs> my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. For my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam here. I could recover the shore. Five and thirty leagues off and on. Why this light? Thou shalt be my lieutenant, monster. Or my standard. Your lieutenant, if you list, he's no standard. We are not run, we share, monster. Nor go, neither, but you lie, like dogs, and yet say nothing neither. Mooncalf, speak once in thy life. If thou beest a good mooncalf. <laughs> Will he lift thy shoe? I'll not serve him. He is not valiant. Thou liest, most ignorant monster. Why, thou debauched fish, thou! Was there ever man a coward that hath drunk so much sack as I today? Would thou tell your monstrous lie? Be but half a fish and half a monster. Lord, how he talks me, wilt thou let it, my lord? Lord, quoth he, let a monster should be such a natural. Lo, go again, fight him to death, I prithee. Tranquilo, keep a good tongue in thy head. If you prove a mutineer, the next three! The poor monster is my subject, and he shall not suffer any indignity. Thanks, <laughs> my lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken to the suit I made to thee? Mary will I. Kneel and repeat it. I shall stand, and so shall Trinculo. <laughs>
as great as least. Is it so brave, alas? Hi, Lord. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I shall be king and queen. Save our graces, and Trinculo and myself shall be viceroys. <laughs> Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? <laughs> <laughs> Give me thy hand. I am sorry that I beat thee. But while thou livest, keep up a tongue in thy head. <laughs> thou makest me merry, let us be Jacon, and let us troll and catch you taught me but while here. Thy <laughs> monster, at thy request I will do reason. Any reason? Come, Trinculo, let us sing! That's not the tune! <laughs> <laughs> What is this saying? This is the tune of our catch, made by the picture of nobody. If thou bearest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou bearest a devil, take a thousand. Oh, forgive me, my sin. Do not die, pays all debts. I defy thee. Mercy upon us. Art thou afeard? <laughs> no, monster. Not I. <laughs> Be not here. The aisle is full. The aisle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet. It's full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twanging instruments will hum about mine ears, and voices that, after I wake after deep sleep, I cry to dream again. Sometime in a deep sleep, the clouds me thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me. That after I waked. I cried to dream again. <laughs> this will prove a brave kingdom for me. When Prosper was destroyed, there shall be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going far away. Let's follow it and after do our work. Lead monster will follow. I would I could see this chapter. Here they sit on. We'll go. I'll follow step.
Give us kind keepers. Heavens, what were these? A living drollery. Now I will believe that there are unicorns. <laughs> the in Arabia there is one tree, the phoenix throne. One phoenix at this hour reigning there. I'll believe both, and whatever does one credit, come to me, and I'll be sworn tis true. Travelers ne'er did lie, and the fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islanders, for, certes, these are people of the island, who, though they are of monstrous shape, get not their manners, are more gentle, kind, than of our human generation, you shall find many, nay, almost any. Honest lady, thou hast said well, for some of you there present are worse than devils. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot too much muse such shapes, such gestures, and such sound expressive. Although they want the use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. Praise and departing. Then it's strange. No matter, since they have left their beyond behind. For we have stomachs. Would it please you to taste what is here? Not I. Faith, sir, you need not fear. When we were children, who would have believed that there were mountaineers, dewlaps, like bulls whose throats had hanged into wallets of flesh? Or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breasts? Which now we find each put out or five for one, will bring us good warrant of. I will stand to and feed, although my last, no matter, since I feel the best is pressed. Brother, my lord the duke, stand to and do as we do. Ah. You are a free men of sin. The never serpent in sea hath cause to belch up you. And on this island where man doth not inhabit, you monks men be most unfit to live, I have made you mad. And even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. <laughs> you fools, I and my fellows are ministers of fate. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from the law did supplant good Prospero, expose unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which foul thee the powers delayed. Not forgetting, I have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. Thee of thy son, Alonzo, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wrath to guard you from in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. <laughs> Bravely, the figure of this harpy has now performed my aerial. A grace it had, devouring of my instruction, nothing made to what thou hadst to say. My high charms work, and these, my enemies, are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power. But it, in these fits, I leave them while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose drowned, and his and mine loved darling. In the name of something holy, sir, I stand you in this strange stare. Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous! Methought Sabella spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced the name of Prospero. It did base my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than an air plummet sounded, and with him there lie muddy. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legion door. I'll be thy second. All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison, given to work. A great time after, now gives to bite the spirit. I do beseech you that our suckler joints follow them swiftly and hinder them from what this great ecstasy may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you.
your compensation makes a man. For I have given you a third of mine own life, or that for which I live. For once again, I tender to that man. All thy vexations <coughs> were trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. <laughs> Here, before heaven, I ratify this, my rich gift, O Ferdinand. I do believe it against an oracle. Then, as my gift, and thine own acquisition, worthily purchased, take thou my daughter. As I wish for quiet days, fair issue, and long life with love, as is now. Fair this book. Sit then, and talk with her. She is thine own. What? Ariel, my industrious servant, Ariel. What well, would my pleasant master? Here I am. Your last service, thou and thy meaner fellows, did worthily perform. And I must see you in such another trick. Go, bring the rebel, over whom I give thee power, here to this place. Incite them to a quick motion. For I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it of me. Presently. I, with a twink. Before you can say, come and go, and breathe twice, and cry so, so, each one tripping on his toe, will be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master? No. Dearly, my delicate Ariel, but do not approach that thou hast hear me call. Well, I can see. Well, now come, my Ariel, bring a corollary rather than want a spirit. Appear and perfect. No tongue, all eyes be silent. Ceres, most bounteous lady, thy rich leaves of wheat, rye, barley, vetches, oats, and peas, thy turfy mountains where live nibbling sheep, and flattening thatched with stover, them to keep, thy banks with peond and twilled brims, which spongy April at thy hands the trims, where thou thyself dost air, queen of the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I, bids thee leave these, and with her sovereign grace, here on this grass plot, in this very place, to come and sport, her peacocks fly amain, approach, rich series, her to entertain.
majestic vision, and harmonious charming. May I be bold to think these spirits? Spirits, sir, which, by mine art, I have called from their confines to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever, so rare a wondered father, and a wise makes this place paradise. Sweet now, silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously. There's something else to do. Hush now and be mute, or else our spell is marred. You nymphs called naiads of the wintering brooks, with your sedged crowns and ever harmless looks, come temperate nymphs and help to celebrate a contract of true love. Be not too late. Not only 
only disgrace and dishonor of that. <laughs> but on the infinite laws. That's more to me than my wedding. Yet this is your harmless fairy, monster. I shall fetch off my bottle, though I be your heirs for my labor. My king, cease here, the mouth of the cell. No noise and enter. Give me thy hand. I do begin now, bloody thoughts. O oh, King Stefano, O oh, peer, O oh, worthy Stefano, <laughs> look what a wardrobe is here for thee. Let it alone, thou fool, it is but trash. Oh, oh, master, we know it belongs to a frippery. O oh, King Stefano, put off thy gown, Trinculo. By this hand, I'll have that gown. The grief shall have it. You dropsy thou this fool, why you dote on us such luggage? Do the murder first, for a few weeks. Who fill our skins with pinches, makes us strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Mistress Lime, is this not my jerkin? <laughs> now is this jerkin under the line? Now jerkin. <laughs> you are like to lose your hair after a while, Father. <laughs> Do, do, we steal by line and level. <laughs> Ain't like your grace. I thank thee for that jest. Here's a garment for it, <laughs> which shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Steal by line and level is an excellent pacific. Here's another garment for it. Monster, put some lime upon your fingers and away with the rest. Let it alone, for if you wake, he'll, he'll turn us into barcles or to apes with foreheads villainous low. Monster, legs your fingers. Help to bear this off where my hogs head of light is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Could you carry this? And this. Right. And this. Shorten up their sinews and feed cramps, and more pinch spotted make them than part of cat of mouth. Hark, they roar! <laughs> Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have air and freedom. For little, follow, and do me service. Project gather to a head, my charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upward with this carriage. How's the day? On the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work would cease. I did say so when I first raised the tempest. Say, spirit, how fares king and followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge. All prisoners, sir, in the line room which weather fends yourself, they cannot fight till your release. The king, his brother, and yours, abide all three distracted, with the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, her that you term, sir, the good old lady Gonzala, her tears running down her face like winter's drops from eaves of breeze. Your charm so strongly works them that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, for I human. And my shell, hast thou, which art but air, a touch, a theme of their afflictions? I shall not, myself, one of their kind, their relish all as sharply passionate as they, be kindlier moved than thou art. Though with their high wrongs I am stroke to the quick, yet with my nobler reason, against my fury, I do take part. 
The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They, being ended, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go, release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves. I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and, twixt green sea and reserve vault, set a roaring war. To the dread of rattling thunder I have given fire, and erected Joe's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong base promontory I have made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command, wake their sleepers open, and let them forth by my so potent heart. But this rough magic I hear observe, for when I require some heavenly music, which even now I do, work my end upon their senses that this airy charm is for. I'll break my staff, bury certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than ever plummet sound, I'll drown my boat. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. 
Behold, Sir King, the wronged Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body. And to thee and thy company, I bid a hearty welcome. Where thou beest here no, know, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as they to have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind diminished, with which I fear madness held me. Thy dukedom I resign, and do entreat you pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living, and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thy name, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the eye, that will not let you believe being certain. Welcome, my friends all. But you, my brace of lords, <laughs> were I so minded, I could black his highness's frown upon you and justify you both traitors. But at this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in him. No, for you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thy must restore. If thou be prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, we see our sins were racked upon this shore. Or I have lost, how sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her yet. Of who sought grace for the life lost? I have her sought her need, and rest myself content. You the like loss? As great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss, have I been much weaker than you they call to comfort me, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter, oh heavens, that they live in both the Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish myself mudded in that oozy bed where my son now lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. But howsoever you have been jostled from your senses, Know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thrust forth from the lawn. Welcome, sir. This cell is my court, and here have I a few attendants and subjects kind of work. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will repite you with as good a thing, at least a wonder to content you as much as me, my dukedom. <gasps> No, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score can then be to wrangle, and I would call it fair play. Is this proof a vision of the island? One dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of the glad father compass thee about. Arise, and say how thou schemes here. Oh, wonder how many goodly creatures are there here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has its people in it. It is new to thee. Who is this maid who asked us at play? The eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that has served us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal. But by immortal province she is mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom I have so often heard renown, but never met before. I have received a second life, and second father she makes him to me. And I am hers. But oh, how oddly shall it sound that I must ask my own child for forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with the heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you gods, and on this couple a drop of less sound. For it is you that have chalked forth the way which brought us hither. Be it so, amen. Was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond a common joy, and set it down with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage, did Clarabelle husband find the Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife where he himself was lost. Prospero, his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Give me your hands. 
Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so, amen. Oh, look, sir. Look, here's more of us. I prophesied if the gallows were a man, this man could not drag. Now blast me that swears grace reward. Not a man of contour. Must the know about my land? What is the news? The best news is we have safely found our king and company. The next, our ship, which, but three glasses since we gave us with, is tight and yar and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. All this service have I done since I went. My tricksy spirit. <laughs> These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how came you hither? If I did think, sir, I were well awake, I'd strike. We were dead asleep, and how, we know not. All clapped at her hatches, where, but even now, was strange and several noises. A roaring, shrieking, howling, jiggling chains, and more of our sounds, all horrible. We were waked straightway at liberty, where we, in all her trim, freshly beheld our royal good and gallant ship, our master capering to iron. On a trike so pleasing, even in a dream, we were divided from it and brought home to him. Must well done. Was a brave you done, my lord. I shall ere long be free. This is a strange maze as airmen trod, and there is more in this nature than there is more in this business than nature was air conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not invest your mind with ducks feeding on the strangeness of this business. At peak pleasure, which shall be shortly single, I resolve to you, which to you will seem most probable, of every these happy dances. Till then, be cheerful, sir, and think of each thing well. Come hither, spirit. Set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. How fair is my gracious sir? There are yet missing of your company some few of that that you remember not. <laughs> Let every man ship for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself, for all is but fortune. Coraggio, bully monsieur, coraggio! If these be true spies which I wear in my head, here's a goodly sight. Who said most these be brave spirits indeed? How fine my master is! I'm afraid he will chastise me! Ha ah, ha! Ah, what things are these, my lord Antonio? Will money buy him? Very like. One of them is a plain fish. <laughs> Mark but the badges of these men, my lord. Then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong she could control the moon. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil here has plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fools, you must know and owe this thing of darkness. I acknowledge it mine. I shall be pinched to death. Is this not Stephen, my drunken butt? <laughs> <laughs> he is drunk now. Uh, where did he the wine? In church, it was really right. Say, where have they found this grand liquor that hath doted on us? Say, how came thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last. I fear me will never out my boots. Why, how now, Stefano? Touch me not. I am not Stefano, but a crown. You be king of the island, Sir Rock. I should have been a sore one then. This is a strange thing as e'er I looked on. It is as disproportioned in his manners as in his body. Go, Sir Rock, to my cell. Take your companions with you. As you look to have my pardon, trim it handsomely. I that I will, and I'll seek for grace, and I'll be wise hereafter. What a thrice double fool was I to take this drunkard for God and worship this dull fool. <laughs> Don't you <laughs> away. Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. <coughs> or stole it, rather. Sir, I invite your highness and your train into my cell, and there shall you take your rest for this one night. And in the morn, I'll bring you to your ship, and so to Naples. For yet, I promise you, palm seas, auspicious gales, and sail, so speed it, it shall catch a royal fleet far off. Ariel, that is thy charge. 
And then, to the elements, be free and fair thy breath. Please, you, draw near. Now it is true, I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver, dwell in this fair island by your spell. But release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, my sails, must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. As you from crimes would pardon me, let your indulgence set me free.